Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. At the recent African Aerospace and Defence Exhibition, two South African armoured and mine protected vehicle companies publicly launched new vehicles. Keith Campbell reports. The two companies were BAE Systems Land Systems South Africa and DCD Protected Mobility. BAE Systems Land Systems South Africa was the first off the mark revealing its RG21 mine protected vehicle. Company Business Development Director Natasha Pfeiffer tells us about its competitive features. The RG21 is our latest addition to our RG series of vehicles. Um, we specifically do armoured vehicles, mine protected vehicles, um, protection against IED as well. And we really saw a, a need for a more affordable um, and highly protected vehicle, specifically looking at markets such as Africa, South America and, and obviously various others. Um, slight difference to our normal RG vehicles, it's not based on a monocoque hull, but we've actually based this on an Iveco commercial chassis, therefore a lot more affordable. We really looked at, at making this vehicle at the, at the price market, um, at the affordable market, and obviously the high protection levels as well as our other RG vehicles. DCD Protected Mobility's new vehicle is a multi-role utility truck, the Orobi. Company General Manager Andrew Mears explains why they developed it. Okay, well, we, had, we developed this truck because we found a, a special uh, gap in the niche products we supply in the route clearance environment where we have the detector and sensor platforms as well as the vehicles that can move troops safely in that environment. But this vehicle is specifically designed to follow behind that, bringing the logistic components and that, that are required in this rough terrain to support route clearance operations. But in doing this, we've realized that there's a greater need for this vehicle and a greater market for this vehicle throughout the commercial, mining, industrial, agricultural and civil sectors. And uh, so it made commercial sense for us to pursue a venture of this nature. It's designed in a, a, a rugged steel frame, a modular tube, a tubular modular structure. Um, it can, it's got a very steep uh, terrain climbing ability as well as a, a, a fording ability. It's got a, an excess of a three ton payload, which makes it unique. Um, in its class, and, and those are, and it's, and it's a rugged vehicle. It, um, it has a very strong suspension, and uh, can just move in places where vehicles, similar vehicles in its class, cannot move carrying the load that it can carry. Other news making headlines this week: Coal of Africa Limited outlines a $400 million import substituting Limpopo coal project, and a pumps and mixers manufacturer expands into the North American markets. Triple listed Coal Junior Coal of Africa Limited CEO David Brown has outlined a self-funded $400 million import substituting hard coking coal project that is scheduled to begin production at Mikado in Limpopo province in 2018. And the last element of the turnaround strategy was really around Mikado, uh, was effectively trying to ensure that we could get the black economic empowerment shareholders uh, involved in the project and then also looking at the funding uh, for those black economic empowerment shareholders as well. And um, we've been talking to a number of institutions th with that regard. And when do you think you'll reach some sort of fruition on the BEE side? We are, we are hoping that we would reach some kind of fruition by the end of this calendar year. Uh, that would then enable us obviously to finalise the funding, uh, which we would look in terms of calendar year 2015. Uh, as you know with Mercado, we're really trying to have a self-funded process. Uh, which effectively means selling project equity not only to the black economic empowerment stake uh, of 26%, but also looking to sell up to 23% uh, of equity uh, to a strategic investor. Uh, and that strategic investor, so we haven't identified, but we would start uh, a roadshow uh, next year in terms of calendar year 2015 to actually look for uh, that strategic investor. South African mixing equipment and peristaltic pumps manufacturer Afromix has established a sales and aftermarket service division in Vancouver, Canada that trades as AFX mixing and pumping technologies to better service the North American markets. Ilan Solomon reports. Afromix is rapidly expanding its pumps range to the North American and African markets. MD Eugene Els explains more. So basically what we did is we sat down and we a pump has always been a secondary product for us. If we wanted to be serious with the pump, we need to make it our primary product, exactly the same as the mixer. So we sort of separated it. 
we got in the people and the, the skill that we need to develop that pump. Um, we got specialists in the UK, we got uh, independent labs to help us, universities, and we also got additional design personnel in to separate the pump from the agitated product. We spent about a year, a year to two years just developing the pump, looking at test work on it, hosing the casings of it, and we looked at mechanical design of it. And then in about March, what we've done is we've launched our first pump, put it on trial with customers to see how good it is. Actually let it operate in the industry, not just in, a, a, in our lab facilities, but actually it in the industry to see how it works in slurry, see how it works in mining applications, see how it works in food applications. When we were happy with the results and we had something on the drawing board, we took it into product manufacture. We believe our pump business can be as big as our mixer business and it's up to us now. We've got the product, we now need to grow it. We need to get out there, we need to offer it to clients and we need to basically get an installation base on, the, on that product for us. Afromix also plans to establish a manufacturing facility in North America in the next two to three years for Crema Media, I'm Ilan Solomons, Jet Park. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.